So hi everyone, I'd like to welcome you to our third talk of the day with the title of Fostering Entrepreneurial Mindset and Engineering Education. Our presenter is Dr. Sardar Kondor. He's a professor in the Department of Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering in St. Louis University. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sardar. Thank you all for inviting me to come and present at this symposium. It's awesome to hear all the speakers yesterday. And they set up how the entrepreneurship field looks like from 30,000 feet. And if we come down and see what can we do with the students, how can we engage them, how do we make them more entrepreneurial? Okay. Sometimes we think about not all our students, we want them to be entrepreneurial. Some of them we want to be entrepreneurial. Some of them we don't want to be entrepreneurial. Think about a pilot. Do you want your pilot to be entrepreneurial? Let me check this runway. Try this. Probably not. So we need all types of engineers. So my focus is I want to try to put is what kind of engineers we want. We want some of them to be extremely entrepreneurial. So what does being entrepreneurial mean? Okay. What is the mindset? It's not the knowledge that matters. It's the mindset, the way we think about it. So let's start thinking about it. The CEO one day wanted to know what's one plus one. So he said, who should be the best guy to ask? Must be an engineer. So he goes to R&D director and says, hey, I want to know what's one plus one. So R&D director looks at him and says, well, uh, give me a million dollars. Month, I'll research it, get back to you. Nah, I need it in a hurry. Let me go to the marketing guy. Okay, marketing is all about numbers. So he goes to the marketing person. And he says, what's one plus one? Oh, right now it's coming at 1.5, end of the month, we'll hit two, end of the quarter, at 2.5, somewhere around that we will land up. <laughs> I need answer now. So he says, the accountant must be the right guy to go. So he goes to the accountant and says, what's one plus one? Looks at him. What do you want it to be? I can make up any number you want. <laughs> All three, different mindset. We want our students to have a mindset which is entrepreneurial. What's entrepreneurial mindset? What are the elements? So today what we'll do is we'll talk about what constitutes entrepreneurial mindset in our view. This one is widely adopted. About 25 schools in US agreed on this, and this is the framework in which we are uh, fostering entrepreneurial mindset in engineering curriculum. Okay. Then we'll talk about one technique that we use called brainstorming. Just wanted to show you how it looks like at ground level. And results. I'll give you an example of a student project that's going out and com getting commercialized. So you can kind of see it. We could show things that have happened. We want to see what's happening right now. So what's the elements of entrepreneurial mindset? Four elements. Okay. The bottom right, my right, is technically competent. We want our engineers to be technically competent. If you think about ABET accreditation agency in US, your university is also ABET accredited. Able to make sure that all our engineers are technically competent. That's not what makes them entrepreneurial. That's the bare minimum they need to be really good at. So what else? The next thing is they need to know, they should know what business savvy means. They should know what their value proposition is. They may go and work for a company. They should know what they're contributing to the company, what the company is contributing to them. They should know how they are helping the customer. So that value proposition is very critical for them to understand. The next, they should be able to know what customer wants. Engineers are not good with customer. How many times our students go and actually talk to customers? Probably one time in the senior design. That's too late. We want them to engage customers on a regular basis. If you think about it, long time ago we had these VCRs. All these VCRs were blinking 0000. 0, 0, 0, 0. Why? Because electrical engineering thought 
hey, I can put this chip which can do this timer, all these fancy stuff. And nobody in the world wanted that. We are good at features. We are not thinking about the benefits. So we need our students to start thinking about benefits rather than features. Okay? And we impact society both positively and negatively. All the environmental problems are because of us. All the medical devices saving lives is because of us. We want them to be conscious of the society. So these are the four things we want them to be aware at all points in their life. That constitute what we call entrepreneurial mindset. So let's give an example. How does this translate into a subject? So I picked up something in mechanics of solids. Being a mechanical engineer, I thought that could be something I can draw. Okay. Pressure cooker, this part of the world, a lot of us use a pressure cooker. So what does a pressure cooker do? Technical wise, boiling point, pressure vessel, all sorts of things, safety you can talk. We designed it so that it's extremely safe. It lasts a lifetime. If it lasts a lifetime, why in the world people buy a second pressure cooker? That's end of your story. One pressure cooker you sell and that's end. So there's a company in India called Prestige Pressure Cooker. What it did is it created a supply chain. The most popular scheme in the world is cooker exchange key. You take a cooker, give it back, get a new one. And the truck that is getting the cooker takes the truck cooker back to the factory. Mel says that's where they get the raw material. That's creating a value proposition that's unique to the customer. Okay. We can think about the customer, but the focus on the customer. The woman who is cooking in the morning, turning the husband off, it reduces the cooking time by about 60%. That's the value proposition for the customer. So society-wise, it solves malnutrition problem, it reduces the energy consumption, it's a green technology, all such. So it has a significant impact on people's life. So anything we couch, in engineering, we talk about these four corners of this. Okay. Earlier, we had this phrase that came, innovating curriculum in entrepreneurship. We have the same thing, innovating curriculum with entrepreneurship. So how do we get entrepreneurial mindset in traditional courses? That's how we integrate in every course that we teach. So where do we get ideas? We get ideas exactly from all these four corners. You see a societal problem. And you say, how can I address it? I, it could be a technical problem. Or you see a customer having a problem and say, how can I help him or her? So it's all about problems. It's all about the pains. Those are the sources of your ideas. And the way we teach that is called painstorming. So we want them to find what the pain point. Pain points are anomalies, discomfort. They're not comfortable with something. Okay? We saw a pain with videos, right? Videos didn't play. That's a pain point. So the tons of pain points. Okay. Life is full of pain if you actually carefully notice. And any time if somebody is frustrated, uses a bad word, that means there's opportunity there. If you can make him happy, maybe he will pay money for you. So painstorming is identifying customer pain points. Okay. Like brainstorming. In brainstorming, you look for ideas. Before even looking for ideas, look for customer pain. And then say, well, somebody pay money to solve this problem. Okay? People are not going to uh, pay money. It's not worth solving. Okay? At the end of the day, you have to have a value proposition. That's very critical. So one of the pain somebody observed is for arthritic people, it's hard to take a grip and peel the skin. Okay? And that led to a company in India, uh, sorry, in US, called Oxo Group, Good Grips. Okay? It's a fairly interesting company. Uh, if you think about name in US, it's accent cases, O and X is accent cases. And the name you can read either way, it's the same. It doesn't matter. OXO, other way also OXO. And the guy was in late 60s when he founded it, coming back to our point. You may notice a pain and say, my wife enjoys doing it. And she's arthritic. I want to solve that problem, that pain for her. And he created this company. And now Oxo Good Grips have tons of products. Okay, 200 or 300 products, different effectors. All of them solving. 
and now it is everybody who wants to buy a good potato peeler buys oxalate. Now think about another way to do this. Potato skin peelers went from five dollars, six dollars over a period of time to dollar. So it reached a commodity status. From the commodity status, this guy lifted it up to a premium product of five dollars. So he is making money, he is helping people. It is both value proposition. He is making the customer happy, he is happy too. These are all some of the products I just picked up random. All of them came because the founder thought there is a pain point he or she wanted to address. And they all companies that came out of a pain point. So where can we see? One place is changing time. When time changes, you actually see the old ways not work. Things become painful. So uh, let us think about one example. Luggage on wheels. So, in 1971, Fado was going through uh, security area, checking bags, large suitcase, and he realized that, hey, I should not be carrying this. Why do not I put wheels on this luggage? And that is when the wheels came onto the leg. Until that point, wheels were there for a long time, luggage was there, nobody combined. Why the pain did not exist before or it just happened to be something? Why do you think the inside did not come in 1940s, 1920s, 1910s? People have been traveling for a long time. What changed in 1970s? Security? Cars? Okay. Until in the early part of 1900s, if you want to travel, how do you travel? Ship. Ship. So, our train. So, you go, you take the luggage. From the car, who takes it? The porter takes it. Would he complain it is a pain to you? No, that is how he is making the money. Okay. So, he puts it there. So, it was not painful. Airports came. Suddenly, things change. You have to carry your bag from the customs all the way to the gate. And gate number 57 to the another terminal, you may be run. So, suddenly changes in society forced us to come up with a solution. So, sometimes you keep looking for what changes are happening in the society. That scanning the society is a critical part. Okay. Now, the, with all the internet apps and all of them are tied to the societal changes. So, now in US they sell these bags with a load cell on it. What change? Airline restriction. The oil price went up. Airline wants to know how to make money. So they said, we are going to charge people for even a pound extra weight also. Suddenly they said, oh, somebody said, oh, this is a hard thing. If you think about how do you weigh, otherwise then you weigh yourself one time, you hold this luggage, look, try to look around and see what the weight, make the difference. The difference is not accurate. The second thing is uh, if it is too heavy, you take some stuff off, you do it, you are paying a lot of money. You want to take, if it says 50 pounds, you want to take 49.9, nine problem. So changes in society is another thing that you should look for. New environment. Whenever you come to a new place, you see pains that are not obvious to locals because they think that the way life is for outsider very easy. So, when you go to a new place, always look for scan for opportunity. Good example, water carrying, Africa, India, a lot of places, women carry on their head. If you think about it, it is heavy weight, carrying long distance, you ask them, my grandmom did it, my mom did it, I am doing it. But the problem is, grandmom probably walked 10 meters, mom walked 100 meters, she is walking 2 kilometers, 3 kilometers to get the same water. Okay, they all did it, just the length is slightly different. Okay. So, they got used to this pain. Now, they have QDRA. Okay. We are not encouraging child labor in any way. So, the QDRA, what it does is, even a child can pull it. That is what the message there is. It does not require a lot of effort. Okay. It can transport water, solving a pain. 
creating a difference in the society. We all use dry erase markers. Okay. And this came out of a class project uh, where the students have to design, a, find a paint, come up with the idea. And they said, there are a lot of paints with it. Can you think of the paints with a dry erase marker? Erasing is a paint, particularly white dress. Once you erase, you touch it, it's all black. We normally, we use black uh, dark color trousers so that it doesn't show up. I don't know how you deal with that problem. <laughs> but <laughs> cover, you lose the cover all the time. It smells pretty awful. Okay. Um, then for one drop of ink, what do you do? Once it runs out, you throw the whole thing. So this was actually a pitch that he did in the class. So I still have the original pitch. That's what I'm showing. And he kind of uh, graduated two years. He's trying to start the company. This is how the current product uh, looks like. And he's taking, trying to take it to the market. Okay. Again, if you think about the message, he talks about the customer, what the pain to the uh, customer, what the value proposition. You have a um, full marker. You don't need to trash it. It's cheaper. And he has a, once you install this, he has a continuous supply chain to the school. Then he talks about societal values, what the technical solution. He kind of connects all the four corners of the pyramid. So if you want our engineers to be successful as entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, and leaders in the next generation, we want them to have entrepreneurial mindset. The mindset is simple, four corners, okay, the easy way to remember. Okay. We want them to have multiple exposures to this and this is here to stay. We want our engineers to have this mindset. You will see a lot more of it as time goes on. What happened in the business schools in 1980s and uh, 90s is going to happen now in engineering school. You are fortunate. You are at the forefront. You are looking at how do we change. There are only a handful of institutions in the US making that change. You will be one of the handful of institutions in the world making that change. That's a great thing. Uh, painstorming is a really simple, very effective tool. You can introduce, you can teach in any course. Kind of I wanted to show you one tool. We have a number of tools that we teach. Uh, this kind of gives you the kind of things we need to teach students so that they become entrepreneurial. That's pretty much it. Any questions? Well, thank you for uh, this very inspirational uh, talk. Um, I still find uh, it's very challenging to take an idea from, like, from like an idea to a, a final product. So, do you worry at, at this early stage, where you, after pitching an idea and preparing a proposal for it, do you worry really that much about the final product, or the student will be on his own after he graduates? Okay, uh, very good question. At our school, we have um, a support system. Okay, let me kind of describe the support system. The students get ideas in these classrooms. We have a lab called Tinker Lab. It's open to all the students, lots of rapid prototyping facilities, a lot of uh, equipment, laser etching, all sorts of stuff. Students have full access to it. We have students who call iScholars, Innovation Scholars. These are about 30 students. Okay. One of their job is to promote entrepreneurial mindset. So if a student comes and hears his idea, they discuss with them. They help them to rapid prototype it. If it's business students who don't have any idea how to make it, we actually help them to make it. Okay. So these kids actually help them to take it to a reality. And uh, we have mentoring services from the Entrepreneurship Center and practicing engineers. Every week, at least two days, all day long, we have mentors there. So the students can go kind of tell their idea, get a feedback from a practice engineer or a practicing business guy. How do you pivot, change the idea, develop the idea? And so they have fairly good support system outside the classroom. Why should you uh, experience pain to solve a problem? Isn't there uh, maybe a better way of doing that? Einstein is saying imagination is the most important or most important ideas of pain. Thank you. There are multiple tools. This is one of the tools we teach, painstorming. We have something called 
suboptimal use. Why we use pain storming? Why I used it? Suppose you have a toothache. Okay, what do you do? Do you think, hey, let me think about it. Let me imagine. No, you run to the dentist. People are willing to pay money, good money, to solve their pains. Okay, so it's easy to sell a product if it addresses a real pain. It's much more difficult to pull it off if it is not a real pain. And Steve Jobs did a great job with iPad and all these things. They said, these are the things you need. Nobody said we have a pain saying that. So there are opportunities in that area too. And we have whole set of tools for that one. And we have Blue Ocean and we have tons of tools. This particular tool is just talking about pain storm. And I, I, I'm not sure that if uh, entrepreneurship is part of it, but uh, how to inject, you know, it is so congested, the, the curriculum. Where to inject these entrepreneurship mindset? Thank you. ABIT doesn't have directly entrepreneurship in its outcome. ABIT closest one is lifelong learning, engaging customers, all those things. It kind of softly touches ABIT outcome. The curriculum is packed, okay? But think about this way. When I was growing up, I used to say this professor is extremely knowledgeable. Okay? If you have questions, you should go. Now the kids never say that prof is knowledgeable. Why? They have Google. If they have any question, they type. Google became the most knowledgeable professor in the world. Okay? So our role has changed from the knowledge de delivery to people who help them to think better. Think entrepreneurial. That shift forces us to be entrepreneurial in our curriculum where we're not teaching cover to cover. We have to give some ownership to them to cover stuff. And our job becomes how do you teach entrepreneurial mindset? How do you help them to think better? And that's where we see. Uh, we have a whole series of workshops called Shaping Entrepreneurial Engineers, which is a five day workshop on how do you integrate entrepreneurial mindset in class. Thank you so much.